Hey everyone, my name is Ergo Josh, and if you're new here, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hello. Today I'm going to teach you a very simple way to shade faces. I'm actually going to talk about four steps. In between those steps, I'm going to tell you about a few tips and tricks that's going to make it easier for you. Awesome. Today, I'm going to look at this reference here. I've actually already drawn it, but I'm going to go ahead and start to show you the basics of how I would begin to shade it. And then I'll go into time lapse, finish it up, and then you'll be able to actually see me put into action what I'm going to teach you here today. Before we go into all of the steps, I just want to give you a basic overview of what you should be looking at when you're trying to understand a face and all of the different planes and different things like that so that you can get your head wrapped around um, what you need to be looking for. Does that sound cool? Let's go ahead and get started. So when you start with a face like this, you want to understand it in two main ways. You can simplify it into a basic egg shape or you can focus on little planal changes that will help you um, simplify the face and get the edges right. So for the simpler understanding of the face, we can look at an egg shape. And so I just did a quick egg shape right there. And I'm sure you all know about shading the egg practice exercise from school or maybe shading the sphere. And so you do the core shadow um, like this. This is very sloppy, but then you have the kind of mid-tones there. You have a highlight at the top and then you have your reflected light on that side. So that's all great and that's a good way to understand how the face is set up. But there's also another way that's going to help you out a little bit more than that and that's by understanding it actually as a triangular prism. So we can look at her face like this. By drawing these lines right here, I'm basically simplifying her face into this triangular prism. So this V shape right here corresponds to this one here. And then this is the side of her face. There's going to be kind of one at the bottom that would be her chin. And then the other side would be there, her other cheek. And then this part would just be inside of her head. And then as for the upper part of her face, you can really look at that as another rectangular shape right there. And then you can visualize the rest of it like this. So this is a rectangular prism. And so you can see that right there. And then that's really how you want to think of the face in the most basic, basic way. So you have this kind of indentation here, this line, and then you have the rest of the face falling down this face and then the rest of the face on that side and then on that side. So if we look at the face like this, we know that um, some of the darkest areas are going to be in this crease right here. And then we know that this side is going to be darker than the top right here. And then if we cut it in half, because the nose basically hides half of the face over here, we know that this side will be brighter than this side as well. So that's all based on, you know, a soft lighting coming from the top, right? Like we have here in this reference or soft lighting coming from the top. So with that understanding, we can combine that with the circle kind of oval shape in the beginning that we talked about and kind of create a hybrid. Now, you may be wondering, how did you get from this drawn face already just from the simple triangular prisms that you were drawing before? But don't worry about that. I have a whole video on how to draw faces easily so you can check that out. But today we're going to focus on actually shading this. So I've already gone ahead and drawn it based on the reference here to my left. Now, the first step to all of this is going to be picking a base tone. You want to pick a base tone that's similar to the average of all of the tones in your reference. So for this particular reference, she has darker skin. So I'm going to go close to the mid tone here. I'm going to go one backwards. I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to make a new layer and put it behind my sketch and drop that value into the canvas just like that. And so this is going to be the base value that I can use to build up my shadows and my highlights like I'm going to talk about in the next step. So for step two, it's going to be making a new layer on top of the sketch. And for that layer, we're going to start doing the shadows. Now, for the sake of time, I don't want to start 
shading here. I'm going to save that for the time lapse, but I'm going to actually show you what you want to be looking for when you are looking at a face like this with kind of basic lighting, top down lighting, which is going to be your most common light source. And you're going to be able to see what I'm looking for when I look for areas to put shadows. So the first one that's the most important that you always want to pay attention to is you're going to want to look for, let me actually use a pink color for this because that will be easier for you guys to see is you're actually going to want to find the edge of that triangle that we talked about. So I'm going to try and loosely draw an edge right here. And so this is the side profile of her face. Um, if I draw a really quick example here of the triangle that we talked about, I'm going to draw that little box on top for later. Okay, and so this side of the triangle that's going to be darker is going to be the same side right here. So this whole area is an area you want to be kind of in darkness. You don't really want to add, this is where you want to actually start adding your big soft brush to start adding some darker values in. Um, and then again, you want to kind of curve that around the chin because that's going to be the lowest part of the face. So it's going to receive the least light. Again, when I'm looking at the reference here, we're going to look at areas that are very close together, kind of hiding light. So when I hold my fingers out like this, you can see that the creases are the darkest areas. And so this is called ambient occlusion. So we can see a little bit of that happening when her jaw hits her neck. So I'm going to draw that again as a little shape here. And I'm going to look at that and know that this is also going to be a very dark area. So these areas are usually much darker than other areas because light is having a very difficult time getting to them. Next up, I want to talk about the eye sockets. So you can see that these areas in the eyes are much darker than anywhere else on the face because they're recessed inside the face so that light doesn't irritate our vision as much and so that we can see clearly in daylight. So I'm going to draw a basic circle here to represent that really dark kind of nook inside of her eye socket there as it goes um, towards where the nose would be and I'm going to draw another one kind of right under her eye this is because the eye is a sphere like this and the lower lid rests like that and so when light is coming down the top lid is going to receive a lot of light but the lower lid isn't and so this is where kind of a very simple diagram of how the eyes would look and you can see that lower lid is going to have trouble receiving light here but there will be a lot of light on top of it but we'll talk about that in the next step so another area we want to pay attention to for shadows and I'm actually going to go ahead and shade this respectively really quick so another area that's very important is below the nose the top of the nose is bright but below it is pretty dark So here, this area is typically going to be fairly dark, um, depending on the lighting. It's almost never going to be brighter than the top of the nose unless you have this really eerie bottom up lighting going on. But you know, that's you'll be able to tell based on whatever reference you're using. Another area that's really important is below the bottom lip. Now, I have already shaded the lips in here, but you can see that they're going to be pretty much up to your discretion when you want to do the kind of artwork that's maybe similar similar style as mine you'll see by the end that the lips are pretty much fair game for whatever kind of lighting you want to do depending on the makeup that's there so but for under the lip that area is also going to be darker because the lip is going to cover that area like that so if i go ahead and fill in kind of these other areas with that are going to be in shadow, um, you can get an idea for the main areas. And this is one that I kind of left out. It's not really in shadow, but it's kind of, it's very important that it is darker than the top area above it. And so it's going to be this area here. This is the temple line, which is going to be a ridge on your head. Um, and it's fairly, it's not sharp, but it's still very important to show when you're doing 
um, skin shading. So you always want to make sure that this area here is darker than up there. Um, sometimes it can still be brighter than the cheekbone. Sometimes the cheekbone can be brighter, but that kind of depends on the reference. But always know and pay attention to that area. You really don't want it to seem too smooth over there or else it can look a little weird depending on what drawing you're going to do. As a matter of fact, that line and that ridge also happens here as well. And again, up here, depending on the ethnicity of who you're drawing. So for example, if you're drawing um, someone of Asian descent, this ridge is going to be almost non-existent. Some African, some people with African descent as well, this ridge isn't going to be very prominent at all. But if you're drawing somebody that's Caucasian, European, yes, those areas are going to be key to make sure that the transition is very clear um, when you're doing the drawing. So that was step two of the shading process, and I'm going to quickly try and go over step three. So I'm going to use a green um, for step three, and step three is creating another layer on top of this and then doing your lighting. Now your lighting, you want to be a little bit more sensitive with. Um, you don't need to start using a big brush again to do your lights unless you want to reverse the order, but you want to be a little bit more um, deliberate with how you're going to pick areas that are in light. So the main area here is going to be the top of the head because if we look at our diagram, this area is going to receive the most light if light is coming down. So I'm actually going to draw an arrow like that here. We have light coming down from these angles like that. And so that's going to be the brightest area. Again, you want this area to be brighter than the side of the face here. The right under the eyebrow here is also going to be a popular area to receive a fair bit of light and then the top of the nose and the top of the wing of the nose is going to receive light and then this area right here is also an area where there is some kind of a sharp transition here it's not as apparent you really want to be careful with this area because it can make the person look very old but it is there and you can see it here there's a very soft line where you can see this part of her mouth kind of really protrudes and catches a lot of light here as a matter of fact you can see it kind of happens again where the lips start so you want to pay attention to that sometimes the bottom lip catches more light sometimes it doesn't that's very dependent on the person that you're drawing and then you know again the makeup that they have And again, some people have a prominent eyebrow ridge, so this area right here would receive quite a bit of light, but that's again very dependent on the facial features of the person that you're drawing. And in the eye, you're going to notice that this area typically receives a fair bit of light because again, like we said, this area is going to catch a lot more light while this one is hidden. But again, if we go in a little bit more granular, the top of the bottom lid of the eye or eyelid <laughs> is going to receive a lot of light as well like that and so again we can continue to get a little bit more detailed with the areas that are going to catch light like this um, the chin you're going to see a little bit of a highlight here like we see there there's a pretty distinct separation of the shadow and the light so we can go there and add some of the lighting um, as we see fit there and one of the most important places here that I almost didn't mention is going to be the top of the cheekbone this is very key you know this is where a lot of you who are very uh, fond of makeup are going to be adding your highlights and so you're going to be emphasizing this really prominent point of the cheekbone here that also catches a lot of the light and it kind of begins to fade down and melt into this area which is a very tricky area to solve when you're shading um, and then again this area is going to be brighter of course because it is the top of the nose and then depending on the ethnicity of the person again this will be very prominent prominently lit but in our case um, her nose begins to really fade back into her forehead so we really see most of the brightness on the tip of her nose now some interesting areas of reflected light are going to be inside the cheekbone here there are times where the cheekbone is kind of split and you'll see that there's an area of light over here it also happens right here sometimes you'll see a little bit of reflected light on the little out outer edge of the nostril like that and then sometimes you'll see some reflected light along the jawbone here but those areas are kind of up to you to decide 
And then finally, you can add some highlights that are not necessarily super dependent on the form, but you can look at them in terms of materiality. So the eye is very wet, and so it's going to have a very sharp highlight like this. And the inner parts of the eye tend to be wet from tears or um, excess water that may be coming out of the eyes and sometimes they rest along the edge where the eyelashes are here you'll see me emphasize that a lot in my own portraits and on top of the nose here there may be some highlighted spots and then on the edge of the lips here and then there will of course be some reflection here depending on the um, lipstick or texture of the lips um, depending on the reference as well so I don't know about you guys, but uh, <laughs> she looks pretty crazy right now, but I'm going to get rid of all of this and go ahead and start applying everything that I said. And I'm going to do that in time lapse and so that you guys can watch me maybe follow along if you want, you know, maybe get your own reference, maybe find this one. I don't know, but please have fun and really don't let it be too daunting for you. And I hope that you will learn something from this and your next facial portrait is going to look great.
So we're back, I finished the face. <laughs> I'm sure you've noticed that this looks pretty different from what I ended up in the time lapse, but I added a few little, you know, you know, an artist gotta make everything perfect before they feel like showing it to off to everyone. I even added um, the glasses here <laughs> really quickly to kind of help it, you know, look good. And then the hair as well, you gotta have the hair, right? So um, I hope you guys learned a lot from this. And if you followed along, that would that'd be awesome. Tell me if you did in the comments. Tell me if you have any questions or what really helped you. Um, in a, another video, I'm going to be drawing a different face and I'm actually going to be showing you even more tips and tricks to help you understand how you can really, really even more easy than this video, um, make a face look really good um, by focusing on the features and not so much the face. Um, and that's going to be focused on brushes and, you know, kind of actual drawing techniques and shading techniques in that video so stay tuned subscribe if you want to see that i've been ergo josh keep drawing and think positive